you know, your income can only go as high as your personal development. So it probably, you know, sped me up a few decades. I was able to become a millionaire before 30 and got to a million dollars a year at 35. All of that happened because I got the right, I got into the right groups. But I didn't stop. All of these things kept building and building. What if we could create a mastermind for the elite of the elite? This is not for everybody. The guys that have already made it, they're already successful, but maybe they've hit midlife and they've kind of lost their energy. Maybe it's their health. You're not as ambitious, as driven at 45 or 55 as you were maybe 25, especially if you're already living your dreams. So sometimes you need to meet with guys that are, have actually achieved more than you, men that have, have broken through things that you'd love to break through. So you need to, to be inspired. So we're creating something really, really special. It's for really the high achievers. It's for the elite of the elite and a group of men working together, pushing each other, not lying to each other, really being honest and taking off the mask. Welcome to the Thought Leader Revolution with Nikki Ballou. Join the revolution. There's never been a better time in history to speak your truth, find your freedom, and make your fortune. Each week, we interview the world's top thought leaders and learn the secrets of how they built a six to seven figure practice. This episode has been brought to you by eCircleAcademy.com, the proven system to add six to seven figures a year to your thought leader practice. Welcome to another exciting episode of the podcast, The Thought Leader Revolution. I'm your host, Nikki Ballou, and boy, do we have an exciting guest lined up for you today. Today's guest is a dear friend of mine. He is one of the most brilliant thought leaders in the area of personal and professional growth and development, and he happens to be a genius at helping people get wealthy through real estate as well. I'm speaking, of course, of none other than the one, the only the legendary Roman Bodnichuk. Welcome, Roman. Thank you so much, Nikki. It's, a, it's an honor to be on your show. Uh, just a privilege. And, and hey, I love the new haircut. You're looking, you're always looking sharp. <laughs> God bless you, brother. Thank you so much. So, Roman, you and I, we've been friends a long time. And we, we have been talking about an issue that is near and dear to both our hearts because we, we both believe that for men that are in business today, things are more challenging than, than they've ever been, certainly in our lifetime. And men need, crave, want to be a part of something. And I'm wondering if you could get the ball rolling on why you believe that is and what we propose to do about that from it. Well, I'd like to take you back, you know, and some, some life-changing things that happened for me. Uh, you know, one of your good friends and one of my mentors, uh, Raymond Aaron, um, did a seminar. Um, I was 14 years old. I saw this big Toronto star um, ad for it. And I remember telling my parents, Hey, I'm going to pay a few hundred dollars to go to this seminar. And they said, you know, you're 14. I don't think it's for you. And I said, well, I don't know. Let, let me try it. And I learned, I learned some, some lessons, uh, in that, in that course that I literally use today. Uh, this is 40 years later. And what I can tell you is sometimes the answers are out there, but we need to go find them. And there are some incredible men like, like Raymond Aaron example, as an example that, um, have, have the information that we need. And I think that men need to go and search uh, for that information. Uh, and I don't think it's necessarily on TikTok or Instagram or just scrolling. Um, it's in a book. Uh, it's in a seminar. Uh, and it takes more than two minutes to digest. Again, this is not a TikTok video. But the, the answers are there. You know, if you go back to Think and Grow Rich and we talked about the mastermind, I mean, this is, th these are lessons that we've learned over, over 10,000 years of human history that was recorded. So I believe that men need to search for the answer. And it's usually groups of other men that have already achieved what they want to achieve. You know, Roman, I think you said a number of things that are, are worth unpacking. You said, first of all, that men are seekers. Men go through life wanting to find their place in the world. They want to answer the question to their own satisfaction. Am I enough? Am I good enough? Do I have what it takes to be a, a person of importance of significance in the world? Do I, do, I, do I make enough money? Do I help enough people? 
These are questions that consciously or unconsciously all men are asking of themselves. And they are seeking answers. And those answers are there. And those answers cannot be boiled down to a 30 second to two minute soundbite in a TikTok video or in a YouTube short or in a Facebook or Instagram reel. Those things are, can, be, can be interesting and fun, but they do not hold the keys to the answers to the questions of life that most men want answers to. The answers that they seek are found through relationship, are found through connecting with other men. And you know, up until the 60s, men throughout history had been a part of groups of other men. There were rites of passage that we would engage in, you know, and be part of these groups of other men. But after the, the feminist revolution in the 60s, men slowly but surely stopped being a part of these groups the way that they had been for all this time. And what this has done is it's made a lot of men feel well, a little bit lost. Even those that on the surface look very successful and make a lot of money, they almost crave in their heart, in their soul, being in a masculine only space with other men. Why do you believe that's important to us men without many of us even being able to articulate that part? It's super important, Akeen. It took me a long time to figure this out. Uh, it wasn't until after I got divorced until I really understood it. So if you, if you uh, scan a human brain, if you scan a woman's brain and a man's brain, they are so radically different. I mean, a woman's brain looks like, like some fireworks went off, and, and a man's brain is, is quite simplistic. We are very, very different. And men like us, you know, we're, 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 you know, alpha males, you know, we are, we're hunters and killers. Like that's what we're really good at. Women can do a lot of amazing things, but we're very different. So let me give you an example. When women need help, they are very good at speaking to other women and they like to talk about their issues. They just like to talk about it, makes them feel better. They have to go to therapy, therapists. Men uh, don't really find that super effective. Uh, Men want to air the problem hear the solution and go execute. They don't want to just go every week and just talk about the same problem over and over again. So it's very different. And not that one is right, one is wrong, but we are hardwired very differently. And so, for example, if I'm trying to get help and I join a group that has women in it, it's going to be, it's going to be very difficult for me to get the value than I would if it's a, men, a group just full of men because we're on, we're on the same frequency. Uh, that's, that's, that's what I believe is the difference. I think that's very true. The other thing is that, you know, because over the last 50, 60 years, men have not been part of these groups, but women have. And women naturally, innately, are better at relationship than we are. They're relationship ninjas. We're relationship kindergartners. That's the, that's the truth, right? That's the, that's the literal truth of it. Men don't understand the value of this, but they innately almost inarticulately are searching for that value. And when they do find a masculine only space, they feel like they've arrived, they've come home and, and they, they tend to gravitate to, at the, to that very strongly because it's a place where they can really let their hair down. And it's a place where they can speak in a way that let's face it, speaking that way in mixed company just wouldn't fly. You know, there's certain things you can say to your men that if you said that to your to your wife or to your girlfriend or to your mother, it just wouldn't fly, you know, and it's very important to have those spaces. I hate this word safe spaces. I don't like using it, but you need to have masculine spaces where these types of confidential conversations can take place. Let, let me give you an example of where I learned this. Um, and I think in a seminar that you went to also, I went maybe 10 years ago, the Sterling uh, a seminar as a men's uh, as a men's uh, seminar, and I was yeah. trying to analyze and I was like, how how did I create this massive failure in my life? I've been so successful in all these areas, but how did I screw up my marriage? Like the most important, how, how did I blow the most important one? Um, but I learned a lot. So one of the things I learned is is when men share bad news, things that are not you know really not good uh, with their spouse or partner. 
their spouse, you know, again, so this is all about DNA. So this is back to like, we are, we are still hardwired for our DNA from the cave, from the caveman. So if I tell my wife all kinds of like negative, scary things are going on in our business, she's hardwired to start going, Hmm, this man maybe can't be the provider anymore. Yeah. She, she, this is subconscious. She doesn't even know this is happening, but then she's going to start looking at other men as a potential provider. And she doesn't even know this is happening. So, you know, these are all kinds of things that, that I didn't know. No one taught me this, Nikki, like at school, like no, <laughs> nobody teaches you this stuff. So yeah. unfortunately a lot of men and, and, you know, the stats are incredibly high, well over 50%. And when you get into that, to the one percenters, the high income ones, it's much, much higher. Um, you know, they're getting divorced. Uh, it's because no one taught them this stuff. And I'd wish somebody had told me to go to the men's uh, weekend before I got divorced. Cause I, I promise you, Nikki, I, it would not have happened. It would not have happened if I had done the, if I had done the seminars, if I had done uh, the learning uh, while I was married, I'm telling you life would be different. So I think it's really important. So if you think you're in a happy, in a, in a great relationship and you're a great place, you still need to, to do the learning. Cause again, I, I go through this all the time where friends reach out to me and they said, you're not going to believe it, but my wife is leaving me. And, and I mean, this happens every day. And, and I think that men can prevent a lot of this pain because what it does to the kids is, is horrific. Um, so I think these things are all preventable, just like health. I mean, you know, I was speaking to a, a really successful friend of mine yesterday. He's in, I mean, talk about hitting all his goals. Unbelievable. But I'm, I'm, you know, just finding out what his challenges are and his, his challenges sleep. And I'm like, you know, I'm not going to mention his name, but I'm like, this is like the big one. Like if we don't figure out the sleep thing, this is like, like, this is a serious one. So again, a lot of times when you go to your doctor, for example, they don't say, Hey, you know, how, how much are you really sleeping? And they don't talk about some of the really important things when it comes to health or relationships. So I think this is what happens naturally in a men's group. Um, but you've got to find the right men, uh, successful men, men that live by their word that are, that are, um, working hard, that are, uh, thinking big. And that's a big one because I find, especially once men hit 40, 40 plus, a lot of them give up on their dreams. Nikki, you, you've seen this. They, yeah. they give up on, on, on a lot of things and, and they just become content. And then what happens is they get fat and they're, they're replacing food and alcohol and drugs, uh, for, for, for the, for the happiness they could have had. So it's really important. We pick the right men to hang out with. You know, that's a very good point. And I, I, I want to unpack a bit of what you were saying. Yes, it's important to do a program like the Sterling Men's Weekend, and you and I are sending some men to the next one coming up because it's a very powerful program and it's going to give men the tools that they need. But if they do the program and they don't stay in relationship with men after the program, that's a problem because not being in relationship means that all the things that you learned, you're going to forget. That stuff stays alive when you're with other men that are also practicing and living according to those precepts and you hold one another accountable because you're not going to hold yourself accountable. Let's be honest at our core as men, we're lazy. That's our core left to our own devices. We're not going to step out of our comfort zone. We're going to do the things that are comfortable, that are fun, that are easy, but aren't necessarily good for us. But when you're in a group of men and you try to pull that crap, they're going to call your ass out. They're going to go, yo, Roman, what's up with that? You say you want to get fit, but you're drinking like four drinks a day. That's not going to fly. Are you full of crap about wanting to get fit? Or are you just, you know, unwilling to do the work? Are you lazy and you don't want to put in the disciplines necessary? That's the sort of thing they're going to say. Or they go, Nikki, yo, you say you want to get rich, but you know, every night you're on TikTok. What's up with that, dude? You should be out there making co your own content and putting that on TikTok, not watching other people's stuff. And, you know, are you serious about it or are you going to sit down here and just while your time away? This is the sort of thing that other men will tell you when you're in a trusted circle with other men. And this is the sort of thing that you won't be able to get away with. And that's the beauty of being in a men's group because you will not get away with anything anything. You're a hundred percent right. And I think it's actually worse now than ever because we're so distracted. If you take a look at the screen time of any of our phones and our kids' phones, 
we're talking about four hours, five hours, six hours of just needless, regrettable time scrolling nonsense. So when people think, oh, I don't have time for that. Are you kidding me? Let's look at your screen time. Number two, you know, this generation, um, unfortunately, our new God is, is the God of comfort. You know, we've replaced, you know, church and synagogue. Uh, and we replaced, you know, any kind of formal religion with th this God of, of comfort and consumerism and just buying more crap. And this is a serious problem. So we live in an age where we're massively distracted, like massively distracted, where people can't even read an article, never mind a book, where they can't even watch a 30 minute video. I mean, if it's less than, if it's, you know, less, more than two minutes, they just, they can't handle it. Like, it's just incredible. Nikki, people can't even watch a movie anymore without having another screen, like they, they, this two, two screen phenomenon where they, they can't really watch something anymore. They've got to have another screen. Like this is the ultimate, um, this is what they call popcorn brain. Um, so we're living in a time that it's very, very difficult, but it's going to get worse, Nikki. In the next two years, if you, if you don't think we've changed enough, just get ready. But you're going to have robots literally replacing most humans. I mean, the Tesla robot, which will, which will be smarter than any human within two years, that's coming out. Nikki, this thing is, is going to be around $30,000. This, this is a robot that can work 24-7, around the clock, no unions, no you know, fighting for minimum wage, n no benefits you got to give the robot. And this thing will be smarter than any human. This is what we're up against, okay? We're, we're in the race for our lives right now. AI already is smarter than the smartest high school kid. Within the next three months, in version five of ChatGPT, it'll be smarter than any PhD. And now they've got these, these AI agents where literally, it's like having an entire staff. Like this agent does this, this agent. Like we're living in a time that's just, will be unrecognizable in two years. So if, if, if men don't get their shit together and get in the best health of their life, get a core group of men, they're going to push them. And what, what, what's really sad for me, I, I know a lot of really smart, successful men. And I talk about, Hey, are you know, using chat GBT or use it? No, I don't think I need it. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, that's like going, that's like, you know, like electricity is invented. Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to stick to candles. That's like guys going, yeah, I don't use the internet. You're like, I'm not going to use a smartphone. Like, are you kidding me? So the world is changing faster than we've ever seen. And, and it, there's going to be winners and losers. And there'll be a lot of losers. So if there's ever been a time that men need to, to find successful men and, and bend together and work together, this is it. Yeah, 100%. 100%. What you're saying about AI is honestly terrifying and exhilarating at the same time. It's terrifying because the world that we know is going to disappear and there's going to be a whole new world coming in. But that's also exhilarating because the world that we know is disappearing and there's going to be a whole new world coming in, which means we can recreate ourselves and recreate what we want out of this world. And amazing things can happen. But that mentality is only going to be reinforced if you're around a group of men that are going to help you reinforce it. And I got to say this, you know, you know, I run a men's uh, organization and it's not necessarily primarily a business organization, but I believe very strongly that there is a missing in the marketplace and that missing is a peer group for entrepreneurs that's only for men, only for men. And the reason you and I are having this conversation today is because we see that missing and we want to do something about it. So Roman, without letting the cat fully out of the bag, why don't you tell the folks, you know, what we have in mind and why they might want to seriously consider this. So Nick, I told you when I was 14 years old, I took Tony, uh, I took, sorry, started with, um, with Raymond Aaron's courses by the age of 18, I had uh, got to Tony Robbins. He had a course I started taking and around 21, 22, I invested, are you ready for this? So if you could think back, like this is, this is over 30, 35 years ago, uh, it was 14,000 us. So I don't know what that would be in today's dollars, like $30,000 on a 14, on a 14 day program in Hawaii. And that program, that 14 days of very intense work with Tony Robbins, it was super hard. Uh, and I was obviously very young, um, made me 
so powerful because, you know, your income can only go as high as your personal development. So probably, you know, sped me up a few decades. Um, I was able to become a millionaire before 30 and got to a million dollars a year at 35. All of that happened because I got the right, I got into the right groups. And then when I built my company, uh, N5R, the global company, um, you know, we're one of the fastest growing companies in the world. And we started, we started, we started expanding, but I didn't stop. I didn't stop with Tony Robbins or, or, or I, I kept joining groups. So I was a member of a group called tech in the U S they call it Vistage. Uh, we met with very successful entrepreneurs, you know, every month for years, I did that in when I lived in Canada, in the States, then I joined for years, a, a called strategic coach, an amazing program in Toronto ran by Dan, Dan Sullivan. And yeah. all of these things help kept building and building and all that information. And the people I met, the friends I've made, the friends I still have today are because of that. The challenges after COVID, uh, I found, is those um, larger groups like YPO. A lot of my friends are on uh, YPO. I mean, there's some great organizations. But what happened, what I noticed, and my friends told me during COVID, is they became very woke. And I think anytime you have men and women in the same group, you know, there's certain things you can't say, you can't say that, you can't post this. And it's very, it's very diluting. Um, like, Nikki, if I'm training for the Olympics, okay, if we're training for the Olympics, like we're going all in, we're not diluting the message. You're not like, oh, it's okay, Roman, you, you can have snacks every other day or, oh, it's okay, Roman, you, you can have a cheat, you know, you can have a cheat meal. Like, no, no, if we're training for the Olympics, there's, there's only one way to win. And what I find with these groups that, again, I was a proud member of for many, many years, and a lot of my friends still are. They, they're so diluted now with all this woke nonsense that it's very hard to, to um, get the value out of them and to become super successful. So the reason, you know, I reached out to you and, and we've been talking about this for a while is what if we could create a mastermind that was really, this is for the elite of the elite. This is not for everybody. It's obviously it's for like the guys that have already made it. They're already successful, um, but maybe they've hit midlife. You know, I don't know if it's forties or fifties or whatever it was in midlife and they've kind of lost their energy or maybe it's their health or maybe it's something where, because I'll tell you, it does happen. And Nikki, maybe you faced it too. You're not as ambitious as driven at 45 or 55 as you were maybe 25, especially if you're like living in your, in, if you're already living your dreams, it's, it's, it's hard to keep that motivation. So sometimes you need to meet with guys that are, have actually achieved more than you, uh, men that have, have broken through things that you'd love to break through. So you need to, to be inspired and the problem with our friends, Nikki, and I've got friends go back from grade two is when I'm hanging out with my friends, it's like, it's, I can finish their sentences. It's like me talking to myself. Like I already know what they're going to say. I need to meet new men that are very successful in different industries. So yeah, so we're, we're, we're creating something really, really special. It's for really the high achievers. It's for the elite of the elite. Um, and the reason I want to do this, Nikki, is I did something for fun for 15 of my friends this year. We call it the 75 day challenge. And, and I decided I want to get in the best shape of my life. And I thought if I'm going to go through this pain and suffering, I want to bring 15 of my friends uh, through it as well. So I created a program every day for 50, you know, 75 days, a little video they had to watch. And we had, we're on a WhatsApp group and we called each other and we held each other accountable. But Nikki, it was life changing. Like the stories, like I'm not talking just health, like health, like, well, you know, our friend Mark Oregon, which does my, uh, what does our podcast. I mean, the guy's got abs. Nikki, you know how hard it is to get abs? Like it's eight times easier to become a millionaire than to get abs. You know, and you're one of, you're one of those guys. So we're talking about life changing things that happen in people's relationships and their business all because of a 75 day challenge. So when I talked to you about this, I said, Nikki, can you imagine if we got the right group of men and they could commit to a year for it with us? Oh my gosh, it would be unstoppable. And because I've, I've been, I've had the privilege of working now with five startups uh, and we've reached either a billion in revenue or a billion dollars in valuation. I, I know it's possible. I, I know the craziest dreams can come true, but it takes uh, an intense focus and a group of a group of men working together and and pushing each other and, and and not lying to each other and really being honest and taking off the mask. And that's what it takes. So yeah, I'm really excited about what we're creating. Yeah, I think what you said needs some unpacking before we wrap this up intense focus that's very important you need to be pushing each other right so there's a word that um, a friend of mine uh, who was a tech chair used called care frontation and i love that word right 
care frontation. So you you care about the man, but you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna get in his face about the stuff that he's doing, and um, you're going to you're going to be with men that want to keep growing. Roman, I, I live by a philosophy in my life. I believe God put me here obviously to live, but He also put me here to love. He put me here to love people and to share my heart and my love with people. He put me here to, to learn. He put me here to learn. He put me here to grow. He put me here to contribute, you know? And if you think about this, you live, you love, you, you learn, you grow, you contribute. Any man that agrees with me that this is a good way to live is going to benefit from being in a group with other men. And you and I are doing some mastermind dinners. And I know that's a phrase that Jason Gaynard originally coined back in the day. And he's got, uh, he's got a, a, a book, I think, called Mastermind Dinners or Mastermind Talks. And to me, these mastermind dinners are an opportunity for you to meet a bunch of other men, non-woke, who are motivated to, to grow and to succeed, and they're already successful. And when you come to these dinners, you're going to have an opportunity to see if this is a challenge you want to take on at this stage in your life. And if you're listening to this and it's sparking an interest in you to do something like this, then reach out to me, reach out to Roman. I'm going to put his contact info in the show notes. My contact info is in the show notes. You can book a call with me using the ecircleacademy.com forward slash appointment link. We can have a chat. And if you live in Toronto, we can meet in person. If you don't live in Toronto, we can at least have a Zoom chat and help you see what all men are craving, all men which is a powerful masculine only space where you can truly be yourself and you can dream and think as big as you want. And not only is nobody going to uh, make fun of you for that, but they're going to encourage you and tell you to dream even bigger. And I'll give you the last word, Roman. Nikki, I think it's, it's important for men to do this, not just for themselves, but for their families, the people they love. I, I can just tell you in my 75 day challenge, which I just thought I was doing for myself and my, my buddies, here's what happened, Nikki. My parents, which are in their seventies, started watching what was happening. And my mom had been overweight her entire life. Like, I don't remember a time where my mom wasn't, wasn't overweight. All of a sudden in her seventies decides, makes a decision to lose weight. My mom has never looked better. I've got pictures back 25 years ago. She's never looked better. My father, which has never lifted a weight in his life is I've got my, my parents going to the gym three days a week. I have two sons that were not athletic, never, never went to a gym. Each one now, I mean, one every morning at five in the morning, cars like dad, can, you, can we go at five in the morning and go play basketball for two hours? The other one, he just joined another. I mean, the, this has been life changing. So I think as men, as fathers, as, as, as sons, um, this is our duty to, to help not just ourselves, but inspire the people around us. Cause believe me, Nikki, they're watching us. They're watching us and they're, and, and, and when we make a change and when they can see, we can make a profound change. We inspire so many people. And I think that's our duty. So anyways, I, I really appreciate this opportunity, uh, speaking to you, Nikki, and I hope some people can join us that are the right people. Cause obviously we want the right people to join us on, on one, of the, one of the upcoming dinners. Yeah. Listen, if you're interested in joining the dinner, here's, here's what you need to be in order for you to qualify. So you need to be, uh, you need to be a multimillionaire businessman. Um, you need to be non-woke. Uh, you need to be motivated to grow. And you need to be open to learning and to growing, i.e. Your, your desire to learn uh, is stronger than your ego's desire to be right. So if that's you, then you can come join us at a mastermind dinner. And the dinners are fabulous, sumptuous affairs that Roman and I are funding. It's not like you even have to pay to come to the dinner. You're going to come, you're going to have a fantastic meal. You're going to be around a bunch of phenomenal men and, and it's going to cost you nothing. So if that's something that's of interest to you, reach out to either Roman or myself. Uh, we'll have a chat with you. And uh, if we feel you qualify, we're going to issue an invitation to you. 
But even if right now this concept is something you think is interesting, but you're not ready to pull the trigger, I want you to remember that you are a man and inside of you is a warrior and a badass and you do crave masculine only spaces. So go find one. You need a masculine only space. Every man needs it. And that's a wrap. This episode has been brought to you by eCircleAcademy.com, the proven system to add six to seven figures a year to your thought leader practice.